Good evening, and thank you for joining Candid Conversations. My name is Muriel, and this is my sister Ruby. We're real, real sisters, sisters sharing, sharing real stories within, within our community. community. We have a great show in store for you this evening. In honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, our topic this evening is on breast cancer. But only older women get breast cancer, right? Wrong. Over 25,000 women under 40 in the U.S live with a breast cancer diagnosis. 11,000 more will be diagnosed this year. Our guest tonight is Katrina Southall, and she is here to share her breast cancer journey with us. Katrina, welcome to Candid Conversations. Thank you for having me, <laughs> appreciate it. As my sister stated, this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we want to hear your inspirational journey. We want to hear about your upbringing, and if you can just please share a little more about you. Okay. Well. Of course, my name is Katrina Southall. Um, I grew up in a town in Hollywood, Florida. I'm a native Floridian. Um, and I grew up from, with a family that didn't talk a lot about breast cancer. Mm -hmm. okay. So I can say in my community, there was a lot of impoverishment there, um, dilapidated communities, mm -hmm. broken families. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I was a product of that. My, yeah. Fortunately, my mother died when I was young. Mm -hmm. um, she died from AIDS. So mm -hmm. she was, um, it was, probably that gap and I wish that you know sometimes as a parent mm -hmm. a parent now and um, as a mother I, I, I wish I'd had those conversations now being a breast cancer right. Right. survivor mm -hmm. um, grew up in the community but I was happy and lucky that I had my family with yeah. me my my aunts and my uncles that helped to raise me and my father and I was able to go into college get my master's degree awesome. and Beautiful. yes and to um, I'm a civil rights manager. I work with the um, Department of Agriculture. So oh, I work out of wonderful. Washington, D.C. Wow. Um, I'm just, um, it's just something I'm very proud of. I have um, a husband, two children, a son at UCF. Mm -hmm. um, go Knights. Yes. <laughs> you, look, Sorry. you have a child at yes. home. <laughs> yes. 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 Um, I'm 47 years old, be 48 in a couple months. You're beautiful. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. And, and I have an 11 year old, um, and she's a um, in the sixth grade at Wolf Lake Middle School. So we are, you know, proud parents of the, in the community. We're advocates. Yes. I, like I said, I am an advocate for civil rights because that's the field I'm in. I've been in that field for yes. about 17 years. Yes. And um, it's needed. I, yeah, it's needed, definitely. Mm -hmm. definitely. Mm -hmm. definitely. Tell us about your diagnosis in 2016 with breast cancer. Hmm. Well, in 2016, um, I was... It's ironic because, as you know, I, I'm a bowler. Mm -hmm. uh, I stay active and, um, like, again, coming from She's where. She's good. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> um, coming from, you know, the community that I grew up in, there wasn't a lot of education on right. breast cancer. So, but I knew just because of my community and my family that it was time for me to start having mammograms when I was about 40 years old. Oh, right. Good. And so I started having my mammograms, and um, this one particular year, mm -hmm. in between my mammograms, mm -hmm. I was supposed to go bowling on like a Thursday night, and mm -hmm. I decided not to go because my daughter had a special project. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I did a self-exam. Mm -hmm. Just, I, I don't know what made hmm. me do it. I said, gift to God, I think. Right. Yeah. Um, so I self-examined my breast area, which they always encourage us to do, Absolutely. and I found a lump. Mm -hmm. and. And it's ironic, I think about it now, is that, you know, I immediately knew something probably was wrong. was wrong. You know, and I think that was my first sign, is that I, I knew that something was wrong. And so, of course, that's where I decided to, to call get my doctor. Checked. It's time to get it checked, mm -hmm. yes. So what stage <clears throat> breast cancer were you diagnosed with? Um, I was diagnosed with stage, to consider it between stage two and three. Okay. Um, what, I, what happened was, is once I was diagnosed, 
I went ahead and I uh, contacted my primary care um, physician. Mm -hmm. My primary care, was she evaluated the mass, and she said, well, it's quite large. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, Katrina, it's movable, mm. of course, but she, she wasn't a cancer specialist. Right. So she said, well, she did give me, give me great advice, you know, go ahead and um, go ahead and get a mammogram. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to make sure you, you know, proceed further. And, um, but again, I think that's when her saying that, you know, mm, it's movable, mm -hmm. I don't believe it is, mm -hmm. that gave me this some sort of self-assurance that it's probably not cancer, okay, right, right. yeah, it's benign, it's uh -huh. not cancer. Mm -hmm. And then, but I still took her advice, right. and I went on and I um, had my mammogram, mm -hmm. and then it was right there, they said to me, they said, it doesn't look like, because I have dense, oh, wow. dense breasts, yes. they were, always had lumpy breasts, mm -hmm. you know, they always told me that. It's dense tissue there, so, we don't, we don't, we don't think so. But let's move a little further. Mm. And of course, I had a sonogram done, and then there, and there they said, "Okay, you know, let's have a biopsy on it." So mm. it's just one progression mm -hmm. after That's the next. Mm -hmm. And then once I had the biopsy done, and to my cancer specialist, it was on Fourth of July, and they mm -hmm. said to me, they said, um, "I'm sorry, it's July 5th. And they said to me, they said, "I'm sorry, Katrina, but it was the most devastating news." I can't wow. tell you how that can change your life. Yes. I can sit here and tell you a thousand times yes. that I can come to you and say that you have breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And until that day that it happens, happens to you, you will never understand how that feels. That is a feeling I can't even explain to you. I'm sorry. Wow. It's okay. No, that's okay. It's, yeah. it's, wow. it's life changing. I can't really. even imagine. And um, so I just remember wow. I, was, I was by myself. So, mm -hmm. and because I'm thinking that there was nothing. You know, it, I wasn't, they weren't going, to, weren't going to give me news that I had breast cancer. Because you were like, and they, they did. kept saying, oh, it might yes. not be anything. Yes. yes, you do not think they're going to tell you that Gosh. until the day they do. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you called your husband yeah, right then like, and there? And it was, it, I can laugh about it too. And yeah. I only cry because I, I remember, I reminisce about that, that feeling, day. that yes. day. And it's, it will affect you for the rest of your, your life. life. But I can still rejoice in it, you yes. know, because I, re here. I can recall the fact that how my spirit wasn't broken mm -hmm. because of that. I was I was resilient. My friends and my community they were they were just awesome. You said awesome. I'm gonna beat this. Heck yeah! And yeah. Look, right. <laughs> Three years later. Three years later. Yeah, I'm a survivor. Yeah, I'm, I'm a survivor. Yes. That is beautiful. Thank did you. Did you have to go through any chemotherapy or I radiation? I did. I did. And I think the scare for me was is that um, the day when I was diagnosed, it wasn't just that they said you um, with the biopsy came pos came back positive. Mm -hmm. You have breast cancer. Mm. Period. They explained to me okay. that the type of breast cancer that mm -hmm. I had. Was triple negative mm -hmm. and there are like three receptors or typically your um there are three receptors that are common among breast cancer okay. mine is triple negative because none of my mass did not have any of those tissues okay so what that means is that it can be a very aggressive form and only chemotherapy is oh, typically the, we'll the yeah exactly to that heal. can eradicate it and you know mm -hmm. to hopefully to give you um that lifelong expectancy mm -hmm. excuse me because mm -hmm. It is the most aggressive breast cancer. The oh sad gosh. thing about that breast cancer is that it's very high rate for African American yes. women. Triple negative is. Oh my goodness. And Barack it's Obama important. in 2016. Well, tell them that. Tell yeah. them that. I'm sorry. I mean, yes, that's I'm, important. Yes, it really is. It's um, the diagnosis of a triple negative. It's becoming so common now among mm -hmm. African American women, even women of color, Hispanics as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the most aggressive breast cancer. Mm -hmm. um, Twenty percent, uh, and it's probably the most rare, but it is the most aggressive, and hmm. it attacks women of color more than anything. And oh um, the survivor rate is less with that type of breast cancer, triple negative. Hmm. You look at a five-year survivor rate; it is the lowest among wow. all breast cancers. So it's an aggressive breast cancer, mm. and because typical breast cancers, you can take a five-year pill mm -hmm. to. So to keep it under control, once I'm finished with chemotherapy or I finish chemotherapy, mm -hmm. then you still you have a waiting period. You mm -hmm. just sit really? there for five years oh hoping that it does not come back because it, it's the one cancer that's the most, oh has the highest chance of reoccurrence. So, and, it, and it's the one that most African-American women Get. that we face. Yep. Oh my gosh. What type of side effects, because we hear some dreadful stories about chemotherapy, what yes. type of side effects did you experience? Can you tell us that? Oh, sure. Um, you know, I can tell you that the most devastating, and it's the, 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 you having breast cancer is already devastating. Of course. But for me, it was um, like an invasion of, in your body. Mm -hmm. It was to the point where, mm -hmm. 
you know, your, your, your hair starts to fall out, you mm -hmm. know, because I went through what they call the red devil. It's a very aggressive um, chemotherapy, okay. ther therapy, excuse me, mm -hmm. it's that potion. It's actually red. Oh. And I remember when the doctors bought it to me, they came, I thought they had NASA suits on because oh. I'm looking. Oh my gosh. It's like, they don't want to touch this, and why do I want it in my body? In my body, yeah. But I needed to survive. I had a family. I had myself. Really? Went, yes. And... Um, some of the symptoms, my um, taste buds, your taste, everything changes in your taste. Mm -hmm. My tongue turned black, my nails lifted, my nail Gosh. beds were all black, my toes turned black. Oh my yeah, your palms, your hand. Because really what chemotherapy does, it's actually a poison to the body. Yes. You know? It, it poisons those reoccurring, fast reoccurring mm -hmm. cells like hair and skin. It attacks those type of things, your tongue, Gosh. your taste buds. So, yeah, and I had a little bit of radiation, but I had 20 treatments of the chemotherapy. chemotherapy. Yeah, and... Um, mm -hmm. Made you sick, very, very sick. Sometimes. Nauseous. We yes. Know. Yes. I lost about 15 pounds. All my hair, hair fell out. out. Eyebrows, my eyelashes. Um, yeah, everything is just, it just, it what stops there. Here. Yeah. I think yeah. that's one of the days that I had seen you. Yes. In the hospital, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, what's, what's going on? Yeah. I knew something mm -hmm. was really happening. Because yeah. you have to have, and it doesn't just start with just chemotherapy. Now, mm -hmm. every six months, I have reoccurring doctor visits every six months. To you check you. Yeah, yes. check, check, check ups. Up. And, Which is good. Yep, I'm oncologist, and you have doctor mm -hmm. after doctor. But it's a, I want to survive. So that's, that's what I do. I, I make it happen. Right. Yeah. Hold on a second. And is mm -hmm. there a difference between the radiation and chemotherapy? Do you know? Yes, well. I don't know. Yeah, it is. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. um, chemotherapy is actually an injection. They, they, I had a port placed in mm -hmm. my chest. Okay. Wall, chest of my wall chest, rather. Um, <clears throat> with, excuse me. Within that. They instill the, all the, the potions and the medicines, okay. the, the poison, actually, mm -hmm. from chemotherapy. Um, radiation is actually they concentrate on a small section, okay. and they radiate that section okay. just okay. to kind of okay. shrink the size of okay. it. But I also had a double mastectomy. Mm. So um, they decided because of the, my mass was over three centimeters, mm -hmm. um, they decided to, I, it was no option at all. They have just to take the rest, the left breast. Because I mm -hmm. found it in this area here. Yeah. I had to take my left breast, and um, um, they gave me the option on the right side. Mm -hmm. And I just decided because just <clears throat> I didn't think I want to go back. It just it's in case. Right. You know, and I read about triple negative, and I, I knew it. what could, the causes mm -hmm. and how it could come back. Mm -hmm. right. I didn't want to have a second breast where it attached itself to. But it's always a personal decision. Yes. Right. I read and researched for myself, and, and I, I think it, for it. everyone, it's a personal the decision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how did you feel about that? You know, us as women. Mm -hmm. You know, the first thing we see when we look in the mirror, number one, is our hair. Yes. So here your hair starts to fall out. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden now you're doing away with your breasts. Mm -hmm. How, tell me about those two situations. How did you feel with those two, your hair and then the breasts? Well, I'm sure we can all test yes. from the time we were kids. You know, mm -hmm. we, we have mothers doing our of hair. Course. Yes. We're putting our Sunday best on. Mm -hmm. Yep. And um, those are things that, you know, you pride yourself on and, um, and not that it's it's you're, you're living life in vain, mm -hmm. but those are things that are part of you. Right. You know, when I when I want my hair cut, I make the choice that you cut my Correct. hair. You know, so in this instance, I wasn't able. It wasn't my choice no. to make. And I think that was the part that was sort of devastating to me. It was like something, someone mm -hmm. taking something from me without even asking. Right. But it was it wasn't even a choice. You know, it's it it's, it happened. Mm -hmm. And you know, at, in, the, in the beginning. You do. You have those self-esteem issues. Mm -hmm. You know, you have. You know, you, you tie your head. My I tied my head up. Yeah. You know, and um, with scarves mm -hmm. and right. hats. And right. but still, you know, at night I couldn't sleep with that hat. You take it off. Right. And you still look in the mirror and you look at your weight loss. You look at the fact that you have no breasts mm -hmm. and those things that what we proclaim made us women. Of right. course. Um, those things were no longer there. Mm -hmm. So, and I can tell you that it was mentally. It was. Um, Self-esteem was shot, right, you know, right, for lack of better words. Right. Um, it was just, I don't know, I, I went through, a, like, I think, a state of depression yes, for a minute. Yes, of course. You know, and it's I remember, even my oncologist, every time I went to a doctor's visit, they'd mm -hmm. ask, are you okay? Yeah. Are you okay? Right. You know, you know, you need to see someone, talk to someone. But, again, I had my village, my, my family, my Thank friends. Thank God for this. Yes. yes, and it was just. Wow. You have to have a great support system. I don't care if it's your, your you don't have family, mm -hmm. if it can be your friends, right. if it can be um, your neighbors, mm -hmm. someone, you have to have a really good support system mm -hmm. because good. it's really tough going through it by yourself. Yeah. Here yes. you are. Yeah. So tell us, how did you tackle each day? What did you do to lift your spirits? Mm -hmm. Prayer for me, mm -hmm. I know, okay. the, mm -hmm. immense prayer. Mm -hmm. um, because I remember the day that 
I came home from the hospital. I passed out. I yes. Was, I, 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 I don't know. I, I still feel, I do not understand why this is considered an outpatient surgery. I, know. I do not. It was outpatient? I was outpatient oh my gosh. for me. I was in surgery for over five hours, both a double mastectomy and reconstruction surgery at the same time. And sense. when I came home, I was after the medication and everything, and I had tubes out of both mm -hmm. sides. And oh, my gosh. After that, I went to walk to the bedroom, and I collapsed, you know. And um, just thank God. One of my friends, was, it was a nurse that was there with thank me. Thank goodness. And so she was able to call my doctor. Mm -hmm. And um, But, you know, I, I say I, I survived it all for a reason, mm -hmm. to be able to tell my story. Yes. That's right. You know, so you're glad helping you're someone here. else yeah. that's and out so, here. And, and, yeah. and, and that's yes. what I thought, because at first I was silent, and I said, you know, I don't want, you know, just... Talk about it. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to keep it. It's our story. Of it's personal. Mm -hmm. right. But I always say to myself, I don't know how I would learn. How, I, I couldn't have learned if I didn't hear or read about someone Somebody else's else. journey, right. someone else's story. So I was able to do that, Very and good. I wanted to be able to share my story, too. Thank you. Thank we you. We appreciate it. Because a lot of times, you know, with us growing up, mm -hmm. we're pretty much about the same age, mm -hmm. that our parents or their parents mm -hmm. wouldn't talk about things mm -hmm. like this. They wouldn't we say a word, yeah. it would happen, and they just wouldn't tell anybody. And it's next true. thing you know, that person were yep. attending their funeral or whatever. Exactly. They don't want to talk about exactly. it. So we have to talk have about to. it. It's so, it's so vital to mm -hmm. survivorship. Yes. You know, I, I, there's no way, like I, like I said, I could not have you know, been so positive mm -hmm. if I hadn't learned from my friends that have right. gone through it beforehand. Right. And likewise, I'm hoping that me sharing my story would yes. be able to help enlighten someone to That's say, right. to talk about it. Right. You know, right. Because you, you, and it creates such a family. Oh, I yeah. see survivors now, I say, hey, you're my sister in yes. survivorship. That's right. Yes. That's right. It's <laughs> so beautiful. It is. It really yes. is. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> tell us about the breast reconstruction. Whew. Okay. Oh, no, boy. I can tell you, this, is, this was my savior for myself. I said, the mm -hmm. only good thing about it, I get to choose which size I want. <laughs> That's right. It's <laughs> the only good thing I want. Like. <laughs> so, um, but it was it was tough, you know, mm -hmm. because you have to sit down with your plastic surgeon mm -hmm. and decide what size, right. and, uh -huh. you know, what type of breast you want. What, I mean, it, uh -huh. it was just a long slew. I'm like, I don't know. No, yeah. <laughs> this is new to me. You know, what are the options? You know? <laughs> so, so, you know, you sit down with your surgeon and then, you know, it, it was actually fun um, because your breasts are already gone. So mm -hmm. it, at this point, it's reconstructed. Right. Yeah. So, so I made fun. You know, made it fun for me. Mm -hmm. My husband was there with me, so he I'm was surprised like, he didn't be there. Yeah, I know. He didn't pick. <laughs> I know. I want those. <laughs> the largest he, one. He tried to inspire me. I was like, mm, who's going to carry those? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, um, so it was. Um, I had a great doctor. Mm -hmm. um, he was able to help guide. You know, what looks more natural mm -hmm. versus anything exactly. and. And um, so it was, it was, that process was not difficult. I made it fun, mm -hmm. you know, and of course, you know, being with my husband, that made it even. That's right. Yeah, awesome. he, the, my, they, oh, they got a hoot, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. That's wonderful. Yeah. Are you the same <coughs> Katrina that you were before cancer? And what has changed if it's not, if you're not the same? Um, believe it or not, um, and, and to a certain degree, I am. Okay. Because if anyone that knows me, I've always been a positive person. Okay, good. Even my oncologist said, you know why you, you know, no, if you walk right now, no one would even know. He said, right. because wow. of the fact that I always smiled. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I, I always, you know, kept a smile regardless of what I was going through and how I made sure that my attitude in inner and outer, it portrayed, it was happy. I, I need to surround myself with happiness. Absolutely. With people. Yes, yes, exactly. And positive people. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, there still were those moments where, you know, you're going to feel your self esteem and it's going to be shot at times. Mm -hmm. right. You're going to go through those emotional mm -hmm. breakdowns. Mm -hmm. But in those, at those times, you know, you look for your support system. Yes. Right. So, and, and I, like I said, I, even every chemo session, I was always had either my, one of my best friends with me, my husband with me, my cousin, my mother in law. So I had someone with me, and I would sleep most of the time. Wow. You're blessed. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Very, very much yes. so. don't have that. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. So, so, so to kind of answer your question, mm -hmm. I am okay. to a certain extent. Um, but what makes you so different is that, you know, once you've gone through something, like I always say, that something, someone took something from you that mm -hmm. really. You didn't give them all. I didn't give anyone permission to take my hair, to mm -hmm. take my breasts. Mm -hmm. And those were things that were taken from me right. that, you know, I didn't give the authorization to do so yes. when it was done. Um, so I'm very leery now of um, just be making sure that I I'm, I'm given, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I'm, I'm, I'm involved in the community. Yes. I, I, and because it's important. You, you got to talk about it. You have to talk about it. You know, where I, before I probably was could be private, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I talk about it. I'm like, mm -hmm. and it, it has even opened me up to things like 
Like, for instance, when I was young, no one, some of my friends never even knew until I had breast cancer and my mother died from AIDS. Oh. No one ever knew that mm -hmm. because I was so private. Of but course. then, mm -hmm. you know, you understand that. And I figured out it wasn't my, then one of my best friends said, my father's first wife did. You know, it's little things like that mm -hmm. that you just, it's like, you know, why am I, why are you ashamed of it? Why, yeah. why are you? Yeah, because you, you're, 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 you're taught not to talk about exactly. it. Don't talk about the yeah, business. Yeah, exactly. It's a family Outside business. Mm -hmm. right. But, you know, I'm, I'm 47 years old now, and I'm like, I, I, I can learn from so much. I oh, still yeah, I right. want to learn more. Yes, right. totally. You know? yes. And there are great support groups out there. There are so many great support groups out there. It's unreal. It's needed. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's needed. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. Especially for people that have that have no one. Yep, that's true. Sure. You know, yeah. so that's great. Yeah. After going through all the treatment, mm -hmm. tell me how you got your life back. How did you get your life back to normal? Some type of normal. Mm -hmm. Some type of normal. Mm -hmm. um, staying active. Mm -hmm. You know, um... I, and I'm going to tell you this story. It was real quickly. Um, mm -hmm. I went to the bowling alley one day. Of course, I was just as bald as ever and mm -hmm. um, beautifully bald. I bet. Yeah. I bet. Beautiful. <laughs> so, and wore big earrings all the time. So mm -hmm. um, I went to the bowling alley one day, and it was seriously hot in the bowling alley. Mm -hmm. and, I, and all my friends were all bowling and everything. I was still going through chemo. I was towards the end of it. I took my hat off. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And everyone, everyone's like, like, it's real. I'm You're not, not bald, right? You know, right. it's like it's, it's, it's real, okay? Mm -hmm. It's nothing. Uh, yeah. it's, we continue bowling. Yeah. So it's like I, I'm learning more so that, you know, to for me to get back to the new normal mm -hmm. for me, it's just to continue to be who I, well, who I am and not right. be ashamed of it. Right, yeah, right. So like even That's my good. scars. I have mm -hmm. scars over this body that, you know, I'm like, whew. But oh, no. those are my battle it's wounds. You. Right. It's me. It's who I am. Yeah. I, I, I can, and I just have to know that I have to accept who I am. And that I'm, I don't want to change who I am for anyone because right. I'm very happy and content with Katrina. That's good. Good or bad. <laughs> I learned from the bad. That's, That's right. Katrina. <laughs> Thank you. That's I know great. that with pretty much everything, when you go through something like this, did you, did they suggest you having therapy or counseling? Yes. They, well, what they do is they recommend it. What's okay. the next thing? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Yes, they, they do. And they, um, they'll always suggest it because they know it's, um, some of the symptoms, of course, going through harsh chemotherapy, depression, mm -hmm. you know, which, and neuropathy. Like, I, and that's mm -hmm. another thing, I have neuropathy. Okay. I, I have that in my feet now. Okay. Um, so those heels I had, they're back you, in the closet. Yeah. They're back <laughs> yeah. in now. It's not important right <laughs> now. No, not at all. <laughs> um, so they did suggest that. They, they do suggest that you, you know, seek counseling if needed. And, mm -hmm. and trust me, I am not, I, I am not against it. If I okay. felt like I needed counseling, you, go. you should go get counseling if you feel like you need it. Mm -hmm. And don't be ashamed of it because there are the people out there with stories mm -hmm. that, and you know, people that specialize in that type of care right. that, excuse me, that you could really benefit from. And, mm -hmm. and it can help. It's, sometimes it's just to live, having a listening ear. Right. And that's, and that's yeah. what counseling can be, you know, yes. and therapy can be for mm -hmm. some people. I had my family and my friends who mm. was there day in and day so out. That's just wonderful. So, blessed. Wow. Yeah. You're really you. blessed. <laughs> yeah. How did, so how did you, let's go back a little bit. Okay. How did you communicate to the children? Ooh, now that was not to good. tell them about this mm -hmm. cancer diagnosis. Honestly, I think it was probably the part that I didn't want to be um, a cycle in my family. Mm -hmm. my, my mother's mom died young. Mm -hmm. um, my mom died young, and I didn't, I said, "Oh my gosh, okay, what is this?" You know, even though I felt like I did, I'm doing the right things. Mm -hmm. right. I take care of my body. I work out. I eat right for the most part. Mm -hmm. I stay busy, and, and so I'm like, "Okay, so my God, why am I going to die young?" You know, mm -hmm. and said, so "I have to communicate this to my kids." Okay, mom has breast cancer. Let me explain to you what this means. Mm -hmm. Break it down. Mm -hmm. But what was great about it, my son, he always thinks I'm such a warrior. He's like, oh, you're going to beat it. Yes. And he's like, I yes. know you. You've always been strong. And right. I'm like, well, let me tell you that. You know, there are a lot of women that's strong, but mm -hmm. they don't make it out of this right. to the next phase. Right. Um, with my daughter, um, my, my um, doctor, my doctor had wrote a book for children, mm -hmm. and it's about, about mom going through breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And I had a copy of it, and that's what helped my, helped my kids. We okay. kind of talked about it throughout mm -hmm. that journey. Okay. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's a journey. Yeah. I'm happy about that. Yeah, thank you. Because a lot of times, you know, the kids don't know how to take it. They don't. And, and mm -hmm. my, my daughter, you can tell she was kind of standoffish for me a little bit. So, you know, she was, she was afraid. And now she's happy. She's okay. Yep, she's, yeah, mom's good mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Three years. Yep, three years. What would you tell someone that's battling breast cancer? Let's go ahead and let them know. Um, I tell you, if you're battling breast cancer, the best, the number one thing you have to do is 
you have to, first of all, get diagnosed. If you self-diagnosis is super important, um, or self-exams rather. Once you have that self-exam, <clears throat> excuse me, have your annual mammograms, talk to your dear physicians, get your doctors, have going to your doctor's appointments. Do not miss a year. Mm -hmm. And in between, self-examine. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and make sure you have a, a strong support system. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't care if that support system is your neighbor, your children, your mm -hmm. family, your husband, your significant other. Mm -hmm. You need to have a strong support system. That could be your church members. And, um, you know, be sure to, you know, to smile, to laugh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those things are key. Very, Very good. So. Thank, thank you so much, Katrina, for being here. You, we appreciate you. you. And, you know, your story is just full of hope and resilience and faith. Oh, yes. Faith. Yes. Great word. Thank yeah, thank <laughs> yes, thank you once again. Thank you. All right. <laughs> We hope you all enjoyed the show. Please tune in next Tuesday at 6 p.m. for another Candid Conversation. In closing, breast cancer is a disease in which malignant cells form in the tissues of the breast. One in eight women in the U.S. will develop breast cancer in her lifetime, and on an average, every two minutes, a woman is diagnosed with breast cancer in the United States. It is the most common cancer in American women except skin cancer. It is estimated in 2019 that 268,600 new cases of invasive breast cancer are expected to be diagnosed in women in the U.S. along with 2,000, 62,000, sorry, 930 new cases of non-invasive breast cancer. About 26,000, 2670 new cases of invasive breast cancer are expected to be diagnosed in men in 2019. Yes, it does occur in men as well. We thank you for tuning in to Candid Conversations.